Welcome back, everybody, again to the Too Easy Project. I am your host, Bill Berg. Uh, for this episode, episode 10, I've got Dalton. He is a rugby player at UW Stout, and today he'll be talking to you about uh, how to train for a college sport. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about rugby itself. You know, some people aren't aren't informed about the sport. Maybe they haven't uh, been exposed to it very much before. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to about the freshman 15 and how to make it the freshman 15 of muscle instead of the freshman 15 of fat. Uh, also, we'll be talking how to make the most out of your quarantine workouts. Uh, some of us are a little uh, dismayed now that we can't be in the gym, but uh, he'll be telling us how to make the quarantine a blessing and not a curse. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming on, Dalton. Uh, so, guys, Dalton is a rugby player at UW Stout, uh, University of Wisconsin Stout, and I love rugby. My dad used to play rugby back in college for Platteville, actually, UW Platteville, and he said his, oh, team, awesome. his team won like the championship or something like that. Um, but, dude, you don't meet many people who play rugby these days. So no, what, not what definitely not anymore um, with everything going on with concussions and like bodily injuries. Yeah. A lot of people think that it's a, it's a, it's for one thing, it's an aggressive sport. Um, but one thing that a lot of people don't understand is there's, there's a lot more body control with it. Um, mainly just because you're tackling without pads on. So you're protecting yourself and you're trying to protect the other guy at the same time. Yeah. But how'd you get into it though? I mean, cause it's not, it's not a sport that's very popular, you know, in middle school or high school, which is where no. you know, a lot of a lot of kids start their sports, you know? That's true. Um, I, my sister actually had a really good buddy. I'll give him a shout out. Um, his name's Keegan and he went to, he goes to point he's graduating this year. Um, and he was an RA with her and he got into it and I saw a couple of his games, I think. And I just thought it'd be some change of pace for me. Um, I had never played a contact sport in high school. So going from really? no contact to, uh, to playing rugby is a little insane. I mean, you, I think you would have had to make even the jump from. I mean, football is the obvious one, but I mean, yeah, that's that's crazy. No contact. Yeah. To con okay, okay. So keep going. So I saw a couple of his games, and I thought, you know, I tried out change of pace, and I thought, you know, it would, it would keep me in shape. Like I was an athletic kid in high school, um, and I enjoyed playing sports. I enjoyed being around um, people who shared kind of like that same interest. So I kind of wanted to continue that. And that's what kind of brought me to the sport. And then I realized um, I kind of haven't – I had uh, the right body type for the sport. I'm a little bit – I'm not super tall. Um, I'm a little shorter and stockier, so that made me a little bit a little bit good for the position I play right now. I, uh, when I watched it on TV, you know, I don't remember – I don't remember what channel or whatever or what time of the year it's on. But when I do see it, every guy has just the biggest legs – biggest strongest legs i mean they're built I, I mean don't get me wrong they're built in the upper body too but their, yeah. their lower body is just looks so powerful it's crazy yeah and i guess you have to be because what's that called the ruck or something like that where, where yeah it's uh, a, it's, it'll be your know, scrum will start off scrum. so usually scrum's mm -hmm. got got um your whole forward pack so forwards it's different than like soccer because you know soccer forward you usually have the um the guys who are a little bit faster a little bit more ball control in rugby, the forwards are those big guys. So, like, you're thinking of, like, linemen or even some tight end type guys um, for the position flanker and stuff like that. Um, so, we'll have those bigger guys right away in the scrum. Uh, and it's literally – I think – I don't remember the numbers on it, but they said it was, like, when a scrum comes together, professionally at least, with some of these big guys, it's, like, two ox or, like, two – just, like, huge animals, like – the collision like a car accident or something like that that's how much force is being pushed into each other just because you got let's see depending on depending on what kind of a function you run usually we run eight man or stout so you guys so you got eight bigger guys pushing against another eight set of yeah. guys it's just it's an insane amount of force going into that and they're basically it's like you're in a three-point stance and then they just shoulder to shoulder headbutt you know just like just push against each other. It's crazy. And the basically, the, yeah, the ox like, thing you said was just perfect. That's just yeah. what it looks like. Yeah. But then you see sometimes these smaller guys and I say smaller and they look small, but you know, 
they're probably still bigger than me out there is, you know, the smaller guys on the team, but yeah. you see these big guys, they'll like toss them up in the air sometimes like go grab yep. the, what's it called? Yep. Is it called the ball? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's called the ball. And those, yeah. what you just described is basically, it's called a line out. Um, so like if a ball goes out of bounds or something, you can call um, either for a kick or a line out. We usually do line outs. It's one team against the other. Um, and what you have is you'll have um, a guy throwing a ball, what we call down a tunnel. So you'll have to throw that ball down in between both the lifters. So we got the lifters and the jumpers. The jumpers are the ones who are going up trying to catch that ball going down the tunnel. And it's opposing, so you can either throw it long so the, the jumper's backing up a little bit and jumping, or he's coming forward and jumping. So hmm. I actually, I've been a jumper for the past two years and it, you really have to trust your two lifters because you're going up and you're coming straight back down. So, like, you got to, like, pencil yourself and everything's clenched and you're going up and catch the ball and bring it back yeah. down. It's, it's kind of a rush going up, though, so it's, it's a good time. And it's, it's crazy. If you're, and a lot of people might not have even ever watched rugby on television, but um, most people's first instinct is to think it's like football. So what, what are the, what's the – I mean – what's the goal of rugby kind of outline the plays, you know, the, the, the orientation of the field. I mean, the players, how does it, how is it similar to rugby or soccer or sorry to football or soccer? And, you know, give us the rules a little bit, just so we got an idea. Yeah. So similar to football is you have two end zones on each side. Um, and similar to soccer is the width of the field. So it's a wider field than football, um, but about the same length. So, what we'll do is we'll have our field set up as um, like a 50 yard line. So like your midfield for soccer and then a 22 on each side. So 22 meters and then our end zones. And what's interesting about um, scoring and rugby and end zones is that the field goal is actually at the, in the front of the end zone. So you have to cross past the field goal to touch the ball down and the word we call it scoring, but like to compare it back to like a touchdown in football, we actually have to physically touch the ball down in the end zone for it to count as a point. Otherwise, if we just run into the end zone, a defenseman could either one, come up and tackle us or two, steal the ball from there. So we physically have to touch the ball down, um, which is, it can be a huge challenge because you're running full speed into a, a like a 10 yard area to set the ball down. So it's why if, you, if you've ever watched rugby, you see a lot of the guys dive into the um, end zone and they'll touch the ball down. We call it a try zone. So it's, uh, it's invigorating in that way. I remember in Platteville last year, um, you can, as a defender, you can hold the ball up. So as, as, a, as someone, someone running in and trying to set the ball down as someone trying to score, you as a defender can hold that ball off the ground and unless it doesn't if it doesn't touch the ground that's not a score hmm. so I remember once last year in Platteville we had like five guys converging and I was the one with the ball and I went to set the ball down I saw the ball touch the ground and then some guy slid his hand underneath it now the ref didn't see me touch the ball down hmm. because I was like physically on top of the ball so I felt the touchdown, saw a touchdown. Defenseman got his hand underneath, no score. So huh. it's it's interesting in that way, for sure. I feel like that would leave a lot up to interpretation, too, because what counts? I mean, do I have to look like I'm purposely going like this, or can I, like, do a little bit of a toss and make it like – you know what I'm saying? I mean, at yeah, what point yeah. is it a set, like a touchdown, and at what point is it like an unintentional – you know, grounding or whatever, you know. That's definitely, like, one of those things, like, yeah, you have to physically be in contact with the ball, setting it down. Like, it has to be very um, – oh, I'm trying to think of the right word here. Very intentional. Yeah. you setting the ball down. You can't, can't lose contact. You can't toss it. You know, you just physically have to set it down. And what about, like, getting tackled? You said if you're getting tackled in the end zone. I mean, technically – the ball still might get touched down, right? And is it then the it's up to the ref to determine whether or not it was because of the tackle? Or, I mean, you know, you don't understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, usually, like, what we like to do when if we're being tackled in the end zone or the try zone is we like to, like, say I'm running straight towards the try zone yeah. and a guy just beefs me right in the ribs as, as I'm going down. 
And I can, I usually, what I'll try and do, and what you'll see a lot of guys do is they'll twist their body as so, like, you got a defender here, they'll twist their body and try and stab that ball down into the ground as they're heading down. It seems to me like it's like a big game of, of smear the queer, if you will, from back in like yeah. middle, middle school. Is that kind yeah. of what it's like, you know? That just yeah. sounds fun. I mean, but you, you see football and like football has got all the glory for, you know, these tough hits and you know, guys just getting nailed out of nowhere and stuff. But you guys are doing the same stuff except no pads. Yeah. So it's just head to ribs, shoulder to back. You know, that's your head. I mean, I don't, how do you protect your head though? I mean, aren't you? Usually like what I was taught right away coming into the sport, obviously not playing um, football is it's a little bit different because what you'll do going into a tackle, a perfect clean tackle is when you're coming in, your shoulders hitting their inside hip. So say they're running on uh, right against the sideline and I'm running towards them at an angle. I got a good line on them. I hit them with my left shoulder to their left hip. I'll wrap my head so it's around their hip, pick up their back legs just a little bit to get them off the ground, and then just drive them into the ground. So my head will actually land either on the side of their butt cheek or against their hip. So I'm protecting okay. my head against the ground or from the ground. Yeah. I, I mean, with all that still in mind, I would just be worried constantly just about getting hurt. I mean, because it hurts, yeah. it hurts bad enough in football getting, getting blindsided by a guy and you both have pads on. Yeah. So I can't even imagine. I can't, even, I, I can't. I mean, especially in the, in the winter or not in the winter, where like if it's fall, you know, when it's cold out and just every little hit just hurts, you know? Yeah. So I, remember I, got, I got props to you guys right there. For, for one of the games we were playing, we were playing Platteville at Stout and it was a little chillier that day, but the, the field was wet. So it was soft, which thank goodness for this. I had probably about a 30 yard break through a hole and I would say it doesn't hurt as much when you see it coming because you're able to brace obviously and for rugby most of the time you're able to see it because you're, it's possession you're throwing the ball backwards you can't throw it forward so you're making these quick breaks and it's all about possession so you usually see those hits coming but I remember I made about a 30 yard break and I could hear the guy coming up behind me I could hear his feet. I was like, this is either going to really hurt or I'm just going to go flying through the air and hit the ground. That's basically what happened is he hooked me on um, right on my knee and my quad with his arm and he just spun me up in the air and it just, it was, it ended up fine. But like when you're not expecting it, you're going, you're running full speed. Uh It's just like constant, like you're, you're going to hurt yourself eventually but there's obviously a difference, I'm sure you know, between like hurt and injured. Um, yeah. So a lot of the guys, you know, will play hurt, meaning like they pulled the muscle or like they just got a really big hit, got off the ground, just got to keep going. Um, because unlike in football, in rugby, if you come off the field, depending on what kind of game you're playing, like you can play open subs, which is doesn't happen a lot. Usually what happens is if you're pulled off the field, unless it's for blood, you can't come back in. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. And for for 15s, which is our fall season, for 15s, we have 40-minute uh, halves. So we're playing constantly for 40 minutes, five-minute halftime, another 40 minutes. Five minutes. So, yeah, five-minute <laughs> oh, halftime. So if you, if you get hit 20 minutes into the first half, it's a quarter of the game you just played what do you either want to tough it out or is it really that bad to where you have to sit out and I'm not I obviously don't want to play downplay injuries here because if you're really injured and you you know you get hit and it's like like I can't even run on this thing like it would say it's like a knee or ankle which we had a guy um come out a couple times with his knee because then you you could hear it every time he took a step was like a pop and a crackle pop and crackle and he's like I could keep playing and the whole the rest of the team is like you should really just not like we'll pull in a smaller guy because he was one of our better players. And it's like, yeah. we, we'll just pull in a smaller guy because it's not worth you, you know, not being able to stand up out of a chair when you're 40 because you're playing D3 college rugby, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I, like I said, football is contact, but they have pads. But at the same time, I would say it's almost, it's almost, I don't know what's, what to call it but like 
not intentionally unsafe, but like as because they're able to hit with their head, they do, you know? So yeah. then you get all these, these brain spine injuries that probably wouldn't happen in rugby because you kind of, you wrap up, like you said, you yeah. don't go, you don't go to for a head, but with, you know, like I forget who it is now who I'm thinking of or running back back in the day, but he would just, he would just put his head down and run through guys. And, you know, he didn't turn out too well. You know, in the yeah, head, it's like that injuries. old fullback mentality of yeah. just truck through. Yeah, um, we definitely kind of. I know what you're saying. It's like that feeling of invincibility once you put on pads. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember I came home for Christmas break this year, and my buddy, who played uh, football at lacrosse for his freshman year, had some of his pads just laying around. I just remember put I put on the pair of shoulder pads. I was like, dude, I feel like I'd run through a wall right now. I know. You know. Yeah. And and that's why in my I think it was my very first or second episode of this I asked the uh, guest his name is Georgie Obitz and I asked him he's a football player I said would you rather tech or ha- go in like a like a one v one situation almost like in rugby or football where it's just you versus him and you got to tackle the other guy or you know whatever like a hamburger drill I said would you rather have to tackle the Rock who's just the Rock or John Cena but John Cena has pads you know like the Rock is without pads you'd say the rock right yeah for sure then when john cena has pads you're like woof you know you got pads that's it's different so yeah so i think the pads the pads in football kind of make it make rugby look like it's a manlier sport for sure you know like the men play rugby you know like i saw a picture too it was a guy from back in the day and he had like a tooth stuck in his head or something like that and he just kept playing like it's just crazy or you'll see a lot of the guys a lot of the forward pack will there's a couple of us who will wrap our heads. So we'll literally wrap, like pre-wrap around our ears and around our heads. And then we'll do a couple um, times around with like athletic tape. And then we'll actually go around with like an electrical tape to keep that athletic tape down. What we're doing is we're taping our ears because in those uh, scrums and in those rucks, they our get, heads like, are pressed against each oh. other. And there's so much pressure from the outside, which is why if you ever look up like rugby players, um, if you look up um, like cauliflower ear, cause that's the yeah, same for wrestling. You'll see cauliflower ear on uh, um, the props and the locks, especially are those two positions that will get cauliflower ear really bad because um, the locks are um, in between two guys' hips. So they're in charge of pushing back behind those two guys' hips and the hips will actually smash against each side of their ears oh, and cause like damage that way. For someone who didn't play contact sports, you've kind of picked the, the just the roughest, most gruesome one, you know. Just about the epitome <laughs> of it, yeah. Jeez, yeah, dude, that's awesome though. So, especially so, then that leads me in. You know, you hadn't necessarily been training for this for years, you know. So then, yeah. And I don't know if you were in the weight room before this or 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 doing workouts of any kind, but what what's like a, a structured sort of uh, regimen that these rugby players are in off season or maybe in season? I mean, what kind of stuff are they doing? Um, for us, um, for stout, we don't have like a prepared, uh, strength training that we all do at the same time. Some mm-hmm. of the guys don't even train, um, which was weird for me coming in as a freshman, because after my first couple practices, I was like, okay, like I need to start coming up with a plan for myself. Um, because I was athletic, but I wasn't, you know, rugby athletic to where I'm running 40 minutes, full pace, hitting guys, getting up going back into those pressure situations to where I needed to build not only muscle strength, but um, muscle endurance as well. Um, So for me, I went into it, you know, I walked into um, Stout's weight room and I was like, you know what, I need to kind of figure out what I want to do um, going in and just, I one thing I wanted to start with right away was building more muscle. I was like a bigger kid in high school, but I wasn't like big, in per se like muscle wise yeah so going in um i wanted to cut some of my body fat off so i could stay leaner and and run faster and do do the things i wanted to on the field but i also knew that i wanted to build muscle um like you said in the beginning on my legs in my shoulders especially so i could take those hits and give out those hits that i wanted to so what i started with um was just kind of i know you talked about in your a couple past couple of your episodes I looked online, you know, that split of like, uh, 
like chest, arms, legs, whatever, whatever it was yeah. like those day, like the bro split is what mm-hmm. you called it. I started out with that. And then I realized that I wasn't gaining muscle where I wanted to gain muscle. Like, yeah, my biceps were getting big. My triceps were getting big, but I wasn't getting overall full body um, exposure. Like I wanted to. Um, now some guys, we have two guys on the team, they're brothers. They actually, uh, they started powerlifting and these guys are insane. Like I, I forget this. I know he's lifted at least 500 pounds for his deadlift and he's only 171 pounds. Wow. Yeah. That's so crazy. yeah, he's pretty crazy in that aspect. And like, we have guys who are really skinny, um, who are, who are our backs, who are running the ball a lot. So it's great that they're skinny. It's great that they're super fast. We have one guy, he's, again, he's a power lifter. He wanted to gain more muscle, more strength. And it's really hard for him because he's one of those guys who has a super high metabolism, which I feel bad for because I'm one of those guys who not, I can gain muscle really fast, but in the same respect, I can gain fat really fast. Like it's one of those things to where I really have to watch not only how I'm training, what I'm training, but also what I eat. So in season, going along with my training, which I switched to now, I got off that bro split last year. Um, I switched into more explosive movements. You know, I'm doing um, box squats, but I'm getting to the bottom of that box squat and I'm exploding up, you know, because for me, squats are one of those, the, the big movements for rugby, mm-hmm. which you're using your legs all the time. So squats, you're not only engaging just about every muscle in your leg, but you're also engaging your core, your back, you know, your shoulders, because you're holding that bar there. So for me, those complete movements of clean, I haven't snatched. I'd like to learn how to snatch before I actually just try it in a gym so I don't fo- make a fool of myself. For sure, yeah. Um, and squats are big. Also, movements to get off, help me get off the ground or get to the ball faster, like um, close grip bench, um, normal bench, stuff like that. I'll add like accessories for different things. Like, um, I'll kind of switch up my training. I'll do push, pull legs, push, pull legs, and then a rest day. Um, that's usually what I do in season. So I'm getting every muscle group going while I'm still practicing. And that way I have a rest day. So Saturdays are usually our game days. Um, and then Sunday, waking up Sunday morning, I do not want to do anything. My neck hurts. My whole body hurts. I'll usually go to the gym just to get out of my dorm room um, and then just go and stretch, maybe row or bike for a little bit. But usually it's, it's full, complete body workouts in and off season. Um, most of the days off season, though, I like to hit a couple of heavier lifts. So I'll go for uh, my max like every couple of weeks. Well, in season, I like to keep it a little bit lighter, especially on practice days um, and like two or three days leading up to uh, game days. You know, that's interesting that you do full body because a lot of these guys, they just look so big that, you know, you would guess that they were doing like a bro split almost, you know, like almost a body, you know, like a bod, like a structured uh, split where you're going to be hitting each body part with a lot of volume, you know? Yeah. Um, But what something else I thought of too is, you know, you see these, these football players just to keep bringing it back because I know a lot of people probably are relating it to football in their mind. um, For sure. But but in football, you see these guys and they're huge. They're just animals, you know? And Mm -hmm. And it's and they don't they have to train for 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 endurance. I mean, there's gonna there's gonna be plays where you got to run a guy down. But in the end, each play lasts a couple seconds. And yeah. How how much do you really have to train for endurance in football? Um, unless you're you know you're a specific position that needs it. But in rugby, I mean, like you said, it's forty minute halves. Is that right? With a five yeah. minute halftime. Yep. And mm-hmm. is I mean I don't know how often the clock stops, but I'm assuming it's like soccer where you kind of just you know, it's, you just got to keep going and running and running. So yep. how do you reconcile then? How, I mean, how is it even possible to get better running endurance and running for long times and not getting tired, but at the same time, building that strength and muscle, which a lot of people think is if at, at the very least hard to do, if they can do it, it at all. So, yeah. so then I guess maybe it might've been easier for you as a, as a freshman coming in and then starting your, you know, your structured workouts, but what about for somebody who's kind of like been in the weight room for a while 
you know, and, and they're kind of as strong as they might be. They're kind of, you know, in kind of a plateau and they're trying to say, okay, now I want to get stronger and I want to get better cardiovascular wise. How can they do that? It just seems, seems uh, redundant in a way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's that classic, like, I don't want to do cardio because I want to get bigger, yeah. which yeah, there are studies out there that say like cardio, depending on how you do it, is going to tear apart some of your muscle fibers maybe, um, or maybe cause you to burn off some of that muscle that you just gained. Um, I think for me, what helped a lot was going back to the basics, um, taking off some weight. Like if you're, if for the example that you just gave, if you feel like you're the strongest you're going to be, um, but you want to gain strength, but you also want to build cardio, go in, do a couple, couple light sets of explosive work. Um, and then maybe build up some of your heavy sets, take that rest time that you need when you're doing strength training. And then when it comes to cardio, um, I know something that's super big now it's hit. So high intensity yeah. interval training. Um, I like to personally, like for me running, I, I hate running. I absolutely, I don't like it at all, as I'm sure a lot of people do don't, uh, but I'll do it because I feel good after I do it. So I'm one of those people who, for me, I can, which is really nice. Cause like I talked about that guy who can't get any muscle. Um, I can gain muscle and still run as long as I'm not running every single day. So my body, when I entered my freshman year was not where I wanted it to be for rugby or just in general. So what I would do was I call, I call my Fridays were my run days. So I would go through my full workout of, and hit every body part through the week. And then my Fridays would come around. I'd warm up, I hit just a light leg day, some lunges, maybe some bar squats, um, stuff like that banded workouts even. And then I'd go run for a mile to three miles, you know, and just kind of hit it that way for somebody who is, looking and has already been in the weight room for a while feels like they're at their potential or plateauing maybe go back to the basics you know instead of going straight to a squat rack if you're trying to build your legs use a dumbbell you know do some single leg stuff find a weakness like I know for me being at home like I I I miss the gym I do it was this whole uh, quarantine thing but I went out right away and I think I got like the last two two dumbbells that were the weight I wanted at Walmart or whatever. Mm. And like, you can't find anything on Amazon right now, unless you want it to, like next by next year. Yeah. So I got the, the dumbbells and I've just been working on a lot of single leg weaknesses, you know, balance, stuff like that. Focusing on things that will make your overall lifts better is going to eventually gain you more strength because yeah, a bar squat is great. Barbell squats are great. Light barbell squats are great. But unless you go in and, you know, you're doing Bulgarian split squats, I do not like Bulgarian split they squats. Suck. They suck. They do. But I will not take away from the fact that they make my legs burn and going in the next day or going in the next couple of days and still feeling that burn and feeling where the areas hit when I'm doing my barbell squats in the next uh, couple of days that I've been doing them, I can feel exactly where everything's kind of functioning. So being able to take that um, knowledge of like single leg accessory lifts, if you want to gain strength, are compounding, as well as um, going back to cardio. I know I'm kind of talking full circle here, but going back to cardio, if you're focusing on strength, but you still want to gain a little bit of endurance, hit and sprints are some of the best things that you can do. Sprinting specifically, if you're trying to gain muscle, you do a couple like, say you're going to do like a 10 by 100. So you're going to do 10, 100 yard sprints with like 45 seconds rest in between. You're still gaining that the cardio work that you'd be doing from like, let's see, 10 times 100. You're doing a thousand yards. So it's just about a half mile. You're 1600 meters short of a half mile. Right. So, yeah. So I, I see what you're saying. So instead of like going out and for example, a lot of people when they hear cardio is like training for endurance, they just think, okay, I'm just going to go run or I'm just going to go with the bike and just, you know, but what you're saying is like, you're running the equivalent 
of what you would have, but you're doing yeah. it in short intervals where you're really pushing at that hit or high intensity interval. Training. Yeah. So you're running like the equivalent in distance, but each, but you're breaking it up into these shorter bursts of high, of, of high output, you know, sprinting. Mm-hmm. Okay. I see that. That's, that's interesting. That's good. Yeah. Huh. So like, well, you're talking like you have a mix between like your fast twitch muscle fibers and your slow twitch muscle fibers. So when talking about like, I'm just going to go run. Yeah. If you go run at a certain pace for a couple miles. That's more your slow twitch muscle fibers. Mm-hmm. That's where you're gaining a lot of that endurance and stuff like that. But if you're talking high twitch muscle fibers, fast twitch muscle fibers, you're talking that explosiveness that, that guy is five meters ahead of me. I need to explode to be able to catch up to him, tackle him is kind of you, you take them hand in hand because you got your hundred meter, you run a hundred meter sprint, but you're also doing it 10 times, you know? Sure. Sure. You're trying to work both at the same time. Nice. That's a good way to think of it actually, because, because like most people and like you, you know, you just hate running, you know, it's boring and it just, it sucks during it. It's not exciting, you know? And, um, but I think that's a great way to, to stay interested in the cardio, at least for me is to have that 45 second break and to have Mm -hmm. that, that goal, you know, that hundred yard, because that goal is right there and I can push for it right now. And I take that break. And then the next one is right there. But like the problem with me with running, uh, like endurance training or long distance is like it's just you know the, the finish line is so far away you know I mean, yeah. what am I really pushing towards right now and oh man I, you know I'm just so tired I want to go back you know mm. but I like that a lot and I'm probably going to use that now um, but the only problem comes is it is uncomfortable to push yourself yeah. that hard for that fast you know um, yeah and that's what people don't like um, but I want to touch on something else you said uh, like you miss the gym now like during this quarantine and how you kind of have to uh, come up with new exercises and ways to push your body, like doing single leg stuff um, instead of maybe using a barbell squat. But um, yeah. I wanted to touch, say something. I got, got these like push up hold things. I don't know how to explain it. It's like a, just like a, the ones like that a, rotate. Like a, it doesn't rotate, but it's just like a stand. Like it's like a handle that's on the ground. Okay. It's, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But what I like do, almost like a gymnastics thing. Yeah, kind of. Yep. Yeah. So then I, what I do is I put those like next to a wall and then I'll do handstand push or yeah. So handstand pushups essentially against the wall um, mm-hmm. because I don't have anything like really heavy to lift above my head for like shoulder stuff. Yeah. And then um, I was just home uh, just pe- this past weekend after doing that for a while, after using body weight, stuff like that. You know, might not have been the heaviest or the most exerting that I've done on my shoulders in a while, but it was something new. And then I was just at my parents' or my yeah, so my parents this past weekend and I went up to our old barbell set and I did overhead press and I like it was too easy what I had like the weight that I had normally done before. Yeah. It just giving my body something else to you know, that this new thing that I hadn't seen before really made it like, okay, we gotta we gotta improve you know, our shoulders now in a way that we had before, you know, and then when I came back to the original stuff, it was like, it was, you know, too easy, uh, you know, catch yeah. but it was, it was really too easy. And, and I think that this quarantine can either be a detriment to some people or a blessing to others, you know, it's just how you use it, you know, come out of it stronger. And I think it's definitely possible. Um, a lot of people are getting discouraged now though, with being on quarantine and not having the, the weights and stuff. Yeah. Um, I know for me, like I set a goal, like, my dad was like, yeah, you, you know, you can't go to the gym, but like it's, you could work on like your core, your running and stuff like that. And I set a goal um, that right away is on my shoulder days, on my push days now that I'm working. I try and every couple sets, I'll try and do like a standing handstand, like be able to kick up into a handstand and hold it for a certain amount of time. Not only is that engaging my shoulders, but it's it's so much more in your core and like pointing your toes and just yeah. getting your whole body into it. Yep. It's one of those things that I, I want, I've wanted to do, but it's just like, I don't want to go to a gym and be sitting there trying to kick up into a handstand and almost <laughs> kicking people or like looking like an idiot. Yeah. So when I'm home, it gives me the opportunity to try something new. And after a couple of those, I'll go back to an overhead press of the dumbbells or um, even just push ups, And I'll be like, my delts, 
aren't on fire, but they're just sore. Yeah. yeah. You know, because you got all that blood rushing through your arms into your head. And it, it almost gives you like, like you're not pumping your muscle up, but there's blood flowing through it from being upside down. Sure. sure. So that's interesting that way. Um, something else that I wanted to, to say, and now I just forgot it. Um, shoot. I had a point I wanted to make. Maybe we'll, I, I might remember it in a, in a couple of minutes here, but um, you said that your body freshman year was just, it wasn't the physique just wasn't what you wanted for rugby yeah. or just, you know, in general. Um, so that leads me to, you know, a lot of kids hear this freshman 15 going around when you go to college, um, like you get all this free food, maybe not free, but it's just so much food. You can eat whatever you want. You don't have your parents supervision, you know, no one's, telling you to get in the gym no one's telling you to to eat this and eat that eat your veggies um and so what happens is a lot of people find that they get a little soft and lose some weight but it sounds like you got yourself on the opposite track and how did you how and and was was rugby the main motivator for that um or what for a lot of it was yeah um just because i knew like if i'm gonna step out and on a practice field that I'm going to step out and I'm going to wear a jersey for my school and I'm going to wear, I'm going to come out and actually try, then things needed to change for me Mm -hmm. um, in my diet and in my training. Um, At home, uh, you know, I I had two very hardworking parents. So, and they had two kids, like I have an older sister. We were constantly running around doing stuff. So, this whole idea of like, you know, like meal prepping and stuff like that, that just seemed to be like hitting mainstream now hmm. wasn't when we were kind of in middle school and high school. So we'd get like, you know, come home from um, like a swim meet or something like that, come home and eat three pieces of frozen pizza, you know, and that was dinner. Well, now, you know, going to school where I can pick what I want to eat. And we have a full on like salad bar and fruits and vegetables and stuff there. The way that Stout's um, dining is actually set up is you get, you swipe for every entree that you get, but the salads and sides are for free. So like lunch is two fifty. Like I know some, some schools have like a black plan where they, or they get a number of swipes Mm -hmm. for us. We put money on our card and like lunch was 250 and dinner was 270. So I can go grab a chicken breast for 250 and grab as much lettuce, spinach, and stuff as I want and make this giant Caesar salad for $2.50. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to fill up on all the good stuff and free stuff that I can rather than getting you know, like two cheeseburgers and paying five bucks for it. It just didn't make sense for me sure. um, in that aspect. But I also realized um, I went on a trip. Um, it was for, I'm going to sound like a huge band nerd here, but it was for a um, marching band. And I remember we'd go out to all these places and get food. And we didn't know because we were seniors in high school. So we were just like, you know, burgers and fries at every place we'd go. Well, fast food, grease, you know, we started feeling like crap about the second day into that trip. We couldn't figure out why. We thought we were just tired. We were just eating crap for food. And once, like, once you start eating healthy, you know, getting um, the proper micronutrients that you need from fruits, vegetables, and stuff like that, and taking in portion control, you're gonna feel so much better. You're gonna feel like you have more energy, you know? You get to like that three o'clock, everybody calls it like the three o'clock sluggishness. If you work like a nine to five or if you're at school, you're not going to feel that necessarily anymore just because your body is so used to the internal rotation of food and how your body's absorbing that nutrients. So for me, rugby was the main factor that I wanted to eat healthier, but also I wanted to train too, not necessarily just for rugby, but also for other things. So that's kind of like okay, my main answer to that. Sure. Um, so what about someone who doesn't have – you know, a sport to really train for. Um, because what happens a lot of times after high school is kids that, you know, were really only exercising or eating well to then compete well, or, you know, uh, because they had that coach that was telling them 
they, you know, had to work out at this time. They had to go to this practice. Um, so how do you find the motivation within yourself to kind of, you know, when no one's telling you to do it, how do you, how do you find the motivation to get up and better yourself in the gym or in the diet? I mean, cause, cause when it, when it comes down to it and when I'm looking at that, that free ice cream versus this free salad, you know, a lot of times. Yeah. It's a, it's cream. a, that's one of those things where it's like a really hard decision to make for a lot of people. Um, and I personally, like it was Easter yesterday and I was on a phone call with a friend and she was just like, calories don't count. Cause it was, it went, um, this weekend was my birthday and then Easter, she's like, calories don't count on your birthday. And I was like, they still kind of do, <laughs> but at the same time, like you gotta, you gotta find that fine line of one, I want to enjoy this, which is, I was talking about portion control later. So like that free ice cream, go for it. Just don't have like a full heaping bowl of it. Yeah. Like maybe go get that free salad first, fill up on that free salad and then just grab a couple scoops of ice cream. And like, it's all about balance because mm-hmm. if you're not, if one, you're not competing for anything or you're not really going after anything, you don't need to have such a strict and harsh diet. Yeah. Um, have some fun. In and that. not saying, I'm not saying my diet's super strict because it was Easter yesterday. I just yeah. picked out on like a bunch <laughs> of like Reese's eggs or whatever they are. Mm-hmm. Those are so good. Um, but it's more of, you know, making the choices for how you want to feel during that day and how you want to feel consciously later and just be able to say like, yeah, I had a bowl of ice cream, but I also like went and trained. I ran an extra mile. I did this. So don't, I know a lot of people say, don't eat something that you normally wouldn't and then punish yourself with exercise because that's Hmm. bad negative trigger in your head but definitely like try and find a balance of you know i'm gonna eat this oh well that's gonna have like i can find some wiggle room later in um like my calorie intake of what i want to take in so like say in the morning um you know you're walking through and you, you see like a super good, like cheesecake, like cheesecake is personally my weakness. I love oh, cheesecake. I was, oh, dude, you walk into a place and you see, you see ice cream cake, you see like this chocolate, awesome frosting, whatever cake. And you see cheesecake and you go for the cheesecake. That's what you're telling me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> gross. that's not even, that's not even dessert, dude. That's just, I like, know, it's literally, it's, it's just so dense and so rich. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I love it so much. Cause I know I, I, it's tastes so good, but going through my body, I'm just like, this is not good for me at Dude. all. Man. I, 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 it's like a pun. It's like when I, if I go to a party and they say, Oh, we got the cake coming and then it's cheesecake. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is my cheat meal. Why yeah. can't I have my cheat meal on something that's a lot better than this, but you know, to each their own, you know? Okay. Okay. Anyway. So, so what you were saying. So going back to your kind of like your original question of like, if you're not competing and you don't have really something to train for in the off season, like I'm not, I never had that mindset of, Oh, it's game day Saturday. So I got to do this, this, and this, and this in my off season. It's like, I'm training. I always tell myself like there's a mantra out there. Um, it's like, I think it's like a CrossFit thing. It was like training for life. You know, if, if I go out and like, I need to lift something that's heavy, you know, like there's somebody for an example, like if there's somebody who is like really sick, there was a girl who was really nauseous and couldn't get a stairs. Me and my buddy passed her and we needed to like carry her up the stairs to get her to a room or to get her to one of her friends or whatever, being able to like physically do that and not have any type of, Oh, can I really like pick her up? can I really do that? Can I really walk up these stairs with extra weight on my back? Or like a great example, elevator shut down. You have a ball bag, suitcase, and a carry-on. And you got to carry it up 30 flights of stairs. Be able to look at those 30 flights of stairs and go, no problem. And just be able to do it and not really think about it is something that I think a lot of people kind of take for granted in their daily life, especially now that um, the gyms are closed. You know, you don't think about climbing regular stairs to be like a type of workout until you kind of have to put yourself in a mindset to where 
oh, there's stairs in this park. I'm going to run a couple stairs or do a couple long stair climbs, like take two or three at a time with one leg. You know, nobody thinks about like daily things, daily tasks that they do all the time to be physically demanding. Yeah. Um, until you look at somebody who is a, like I had a buddy who was just like, I'm so grateful to be able to climb stairs and walk because he had a relative who was in a wheelchair. And like, you kind of have to take that and go, you know, I want to train to better myself, to better my quality of life and be able to just look at those stairs with my, all my bags and stuff and just be able to go like, you like your thing too easy, you know? That's, that's a great piece of advice. And, and I heard something too. Um, I can't remember exactly how it went. It was something like, you know, don't, don't train or don't, you know, don't try to be an athlete. Try to live, you know, the lifestyle of an athlete, like, like live athletically instead of yeah. trying to be an athlete, you know? Um, and you can try to um, interpret that how you want, but how I interpret it is, is like you said, you know, if I, am I, am I, if I'm going to train and I'm going to eat well to be, you know, healthy, then having that little ice cream, I'm fine with, because like you said, compromising and, and things like that. But if, but then if I'm going to train and, with the mindset of I'm an athlete, then I'm going to like hold myself to that standard where I'm going to beat myself up if I have that ice cream. When in reality, you know, beating myself up over it might be more detrimental than just having that ice cream in the end. Exactly. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, so that's that's great, dude. So then, after rugby, what are you gonna keep doing? Um, you know, I I really one of my main life goals is I curled since I was eight years old. So like Olympic, like ice curling, winter sports, I would love to continue that. The odds of that happening are pretty low, just the way that the United States has a system set up which is a little bit of a change of pace from rugby to going back to curling. Well, um, both sports are definitely not, you know, everyone's go-to sport when they're in high school or middle school. So that's, that's, yeah. that's cool, dude. You got some, you got some cool stuff going on, but yeah. Um, yeah. But I also, another one, um, my main goal is I really want to run an Ironman. So like me That'd hating awesome. running and like, I don't like running, but I want, I'd, put myself through an Ironman, which is literally a marathon in a triathlon. So your body's all, all already beaten the crap. Um, and then going into running a full marathon, obviously there's steps to just, I'm not just going to hop into a marathon or hop into an Ironman. Um, there's obviously things like five Ks, half, half marathon, marathon, and then looking at bigger triathlons before going into Ironman um, is definitely something I want to try. My my friend one time when I was over at his house when I was little, his dad was training for an Ironman at the time, actually. And I remember this very vividly, like more than anything when I was that age at his house. This is like the one thing. His dad walked in the door and was like, oh, you know, I should have started should have started training earlier. That 50-mile run was a little tough. Or the 50-mile bike was a little tough. And I'm like in – I'm like eight years old. And I'm like, 50-mile bike? Just like yeah. that? I mean – these these Iron Man guys are just nuts, and I can't yeah. imagine ever doing one. I mean, if I'm lucky, I could run a half marathon. I think, but dude, that's that's great that you have aspirations like that because a lot of people, a lot of people, all they want to do is just actually get to the gym that day. Yeah. Um, so I think I think having that big goal, even if you don't achieve it, is going to lead to you succeeding greatly in your physical life in other For areas. Sure. I mean, even yeah. if you don't succeed in getting that full Ironman or you just don't do as well as you hoped, I mean, you're going to be in a phenomenal shape in so many other ways. Than exactly. Most are anyway. So like you know, being able, like you said before, like being able to have that goal and being able to, if like, say I don't reach it for some reason, which I would, I would really like to say, I don't reach it. You can look at yourself and be like, I took all these steps. I didn't achieve that goal, but look at where I am, you yeah. know, like, yeah, like set your standards high. I mean, what's the point of setting your standards to something that you actually know you can achieve at some point? Yeah. Like, what's the point? I mean, why even set that as a goal? Because you know that it's realistic. Even if it's not realistic, you don't know if you'll 
with the training or whatever you put towards, you don't know if you'll, you'll do it. And if you set that standard too low, then, then you'll never reach it. And then there's this guy named Andy Frizzella who has a great podcast. Um, and he's really, he's really blatant. He won't, he's not afraid to tell you how he feels. And um, that's just something I like about him. But what he said is if you set out, he's very economical and financial, but he said, if you set out to make a million dollars, you might make 500,000, but that's, you know, if, if you set out to make 500 grand, you might only make 300. Yeah. You know? So in the end, setting your standards high, like you are, uh, you're just, it's going to lead to so much more success than if you're just exactly. going to say, you know, I'm just going to run my local 5k every year, you know? So I yeah. think that's awesome. One more story though. My dad, like I said, was in Platteville, uh, in college, he played rugby and he said, when they made it to the national tournament or whatever it was, I don't remember. I don't know how it works exactly. Don't, don't uh, quote me on this, but he said that the other teams were like, Oh, you're from Wisconsin. Oh, you're, you know, you're the Badgers. And he's like, no, we're just, we're not the Badgers. We're just this little dinky platform, you know? So, yeah. That's your team very good. Um, Our team personally, this past year didn't do as well as we wanted, but we're kind of going over a, a change into um, we're losing a lot of seniors, a lot of our bigger guys. So we just ended up uh, changing conferences over to something that we can be a little bit more competitive in, mm. as well as get a little bit less injured because we don't have these guys who are like semi trucks run over guys who are like mopeds. Like that's kind of a good scenario. <laughs> Is that the, the terminology you guys use? Sem- yeah, we always use, we like to use, um, I have, we've played Whitewater, I think twice and Whitewater just got like a huge grant because they are like the epitome of rugby in Wisconsin. They got like some million dollar or plus grant to build their own facility in Whitewater, Jeez. which is absolutely awesome for the sport. Um, but you're talking to those guys who are playing us who aren't sponsored by the school at all, aren't getting any major grants, don't have, we have to pay for all of our own stuff, you know, to be able to pull guys in who are already in college one, who are focused on other college things and may not necessarily want to put money in other places. It's kind of a challenge to recruit people that way. So you kind of have to find, and like you said, in the beginning, rugby is not something that a lot of people think that they'll they'll play or or even are exposed to which is something that a lot of us are talking right now is growing the sport of rugby just because we need more guys um not only at the college level but um i know a family who's in green bay who their son is in high school and he's already playing rugby so like being able to grow the sport that way we're not to where we want to be right now at stout Um, But hopefully this next year is kind of a a good year for us. I hope so too. That's, that's amazing. You dropped some awesome advice today and I'm glad to have you on. 